What's up guys, in today's video we're gonna be doing a full detail, one step polish and wax on this 52 foot Viking. Let's go. So guys, overall this boat is actually in super good shape. The owner does have a full-time captain, or at least did have a full-time captain maintaining the boat. So overall the boat is in great shape, but he just hired us just to do a one-step polish. We're gonna polish all the superstructure here, all the exterior of the top side only. And we're gonna go ahead and hit it with a one-step polish and then we're gonna seal it up with our Jeskar power lock. Uh, one thing I wanna point out is when we do the top side only on these boats, I usually uh, require, if they want the hull done or you know below the below the rub rail here, I usually require it to get out of the water. So for this video's sake, we are only doing the top side only, which is gonna be from our tow rail, our rub rail right here. Uh, so we're gonna do everything from here up. Guys, like always, if you get any value out of this video, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell notification so every time I make a video, it will pop up. And like always, all the products that I use in this video are in the description section down below. If you click those links and you purchase those products, I get a small percentage of that sale, and I thank you guys so much for all the support. So before we hop into the teaching on this board, I wanna point out one thing. This blue boat back here, I'll link the video right here. I was doing this boat about two weeks ago, and while I was doing this boat at the marina, this customer walks up to me and ask, um, hey, how much do you charge? Will you give me a quote on doing my boat? So that's actually how I booked this job. This guy did not see my videos. He did not see my fancy website. I was literally out here working at the marina and he come up to me, saw that we did a great job and wanted to have a quote. So guys, one thing when you're working at marinas, always do a good job, always clean up after yourself so other people are watching and they want to hire you and it's the easiest form of advertising. This video is gonna be pretty long so I'm just gonna cut right to the chase so let's go ahead. Guys, do me a favor, stick all the way through the end of the video. If you do sport fishing boats, this video is going to give you a ton of value because I'm gonna go over how to polish it properly. We're gonna go over safety equipment for doing the front, uh, you know, the front brow area and we're just gonna go for basic teachings on these sport fishing boats and how they're different than other like smaller boats on these Vikings. The gel coat is really hard and super nice and super easy to work with so follow all the way through the end guys and you're just gonna get a ton of value out of this video all right so let's hop in here and just check this boat out the teak is in super nice shape um, it could use a sand and I may actually ask the customer about that but um, it looks like it's in pretty good shape so first thing we want to look for guys is your compartments we're gonna be pulling all this stuff out and cleaning all of the compartments on this boat all right that is one place especially on these sport fishers that people miss the most are gonna be inside the compartments. Make sure we get all of our hatches in our fish boxes. Um, these are really important because this is where they put their fish when they catch them. So we wanna make sure that we get all of their fish boxes looking right. So overall, the boat's a little dirty, um, as you can tell here, but it's not terrible. I'm gonna go up top here. As you can see, I mean, the boat is in good shape. It's not dirty. Um, and most of your nicer sport fishers here, especially one like that bad boy, <laughs> and most of your other sport fishers out here, they actually are in good shape and they just need a good wash and just keep wax. And if you are a boat owner and you own a sport fisher, you know, you wanna keep these things waxed about every three months um, to four months, but I would say, air on the three month side on these because they're literally sitting out here in the sun all day long just baking in the sun and about three months later your wax is gone we are going to apply woody wax on all of our metal going to get all of our metal looking good i mean as you can see this stainless is in great shape but we're going to make it look that much better well guys that is enough of me talking let's go ahead and just get straight to work all right guys, so we're gonna hop into the very first step of this process and it is going to be the washing step, okay? So as you can tell, we start from the very top and work our way down. Right here, I'm using a hand wash mitt to do the center console area and really everywhere that using a brush is kind of not necessary. I usually use the brush on the walls, the floors, and that kind of thing, anywhere I really can't really reach by hand. But the uh, center console area, 
I'm gonna do with the the mitt and the metal so all the metal here we're gonna do with the mitt as well if you're wondering what's in my bucket I just have a bucket of soapy water and it's just Dawn dishwashing soap and the only reason why I'm using Dawn is because this boat did have some salt on there that needed to come off because there was a hurricane just two about two or three weeks ago so we're stripping all that off and the boat has not been waxed in months the owner said so we're just wanting to really get everything off all the oils greases and old waxes and sealants that may have been on there before to get a fresh surface so we can go ahead and seal it up later on so as you can tell we're just going to wash the boat there's nothing super fancy here guys we're just literally washing the boat from the very top and we're working our way from the front to the back now there are some radars and stuff at the very top i did not get that on film uh, i apologize for that i was just trying to figure out a safe way to do it and by the time I figured it out, I just went ahead and washed it and I didn't film it. So do the very top of the boat, work your way all the way down. Now guys, I am using this blue uh, brush here that you can tell I'm doing all the sides, I'm doing the front mask, and also you can do the Isinglass with this brush. And that's why I really like it is because it is a super soft bristle brush that you can use um, on Isinglass, the boat, non-skid, the entire boat. So some, some brushes are a little too abrasive for Isinglass, this brush will not. And you can find everything, like I said, before in the description down below all the products that i'm using are in the description down below so guys go ahead finish washing your boat from top to bottom front to back use dawn dishwashing soap to rip off any waxes any salt any greases anything like that from the elements then we're going to move on to our next step All right, guys, so as soon as you're done washing it, go ahead and dry the boat. And this is going to cut down on watermarks. We do not want watermarks. It comes from the minerals inside of the water. So go ahead and dry the boat off as soon as you possibly can just to ensure that the minerals don't dry onto the boat and cause watermarks. So you can use this mop here or a um, uh, like a chamois. Um, that I have in the link down below. Now, once you're done the outside, do the cockpit. And the only reason why I dried it beforehand is because the cockpit was under this covering um, from the, the canvas in the back. So I dried everything on the entire exterior of the boat and then came back and just did the cockpit. So the next step is going to be cleaning all of our compartments uh, on the entire boat. I do it at this step just to get all the cleaning aspect done. So as you can see here, I'm using super clean degreaser. This stuff is great for cleaning out fish blood, um, even like rust marks and grease and dirt and that kind of thing i just spray it straight on this is not diluted this is straight uh super clean out of the spray bottle and then i take my mitt and then i wash all the compartments so these are going to be your fish boxes uh compartments there's sometimes there's mold fish blood scales in these uh in these fish boxes on these sport fishers so go ahead use some degreaser and get them all cleaned up Okay, so as you can see, kind of in this little bilge area, there's a lot of grease and a lot of oil um, and just scum from, from the water. Now you can see this super clean, literally cleaned it right up. It was crazy. You just spray it on there and wipe it right off. I then took a water hose and kind of sprayed out all the excess. So guys, super clean is a great product that's gonna help clean up grease, oil, and just, you know, uh, water scum very, very quickly. Where the boat sits is currently in pretty dirty water. So these bilge areas on these boats usually get pretty funky. Now, as you can see on the teak here, I'm just using the Dawn dishwashing soap just to give it a light brush on the teak. The teak is in very good shape on this boat, so it did not need a lot of scrubbing. So that's why just a simple Dawn wash will do the trick. Next thing we wanna do is just tighten up all of our compartments again. This is where I just get the compartments looking perfect. We're gonna do all of our drawers, all of our you know uh, bait tackle drawers, that kind of thing. Get everything nice and cleaned up on the entire boat, front to back, top to bottom. We're gonna get all the compartments at this step. That way it's just done. And then all you have to do from now on is do your polishing and your waxing, and then you're pretty much done. You don't have to clean anymore. So get all of your cleaning done before we hop on to our next step. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do here is I'm using this ceramic spray. This is Nautical One ceramic coating. It is a spray ceramic coating. 
Uh, the bottle says it lasts two years. I don't know if I'd necessarily um, put my life on that. <laughs> um, I don't know of a lot of coatings that will really will last two years, but I'm gonna say you're definitely gonna get a good eight to eight months to a year out of it, especially inside the helm here, okay? So inside these helms, they don't get a ton of direct sunlight. They will get light, obviously, but they don't get a uh, direct sunlight with UV. So the ceramic or even your wax is gonna last a lot longer. Now, the reason why I did not just do a traditional wax in here is because it was already in super good shape. So I just went ahead and did this ceramic coating application just to um, you know, give the customer a little bit more value so they don't even have to worry about waxing in here pretty much ever again. This ceramic coating is really good and it's super, super, super crazy easy to apply. All you do is you, uh, uh, you spray it um, directly onto a rag and, and you kind of wipe it in really good and then you take another rag and wipe off the excess. It's literally that easy guys and you do it right away. You spray it right on the rag, wipe it in real good, nice thick coat and then you come back and you take it right off. It is that easy. We did that on the entire helm and the entire ceiling of this boat. And that's the only place we did it. Everywhere else got the Jeskar power line. All right, now it is time for our polishing step, okay? As you can see, I'm hanging off of my rope and harness on the front brow of this boat. I use a rope and harness because it is the absolute safest way to ensure that you don't fall off of these boats and die and hurt yourself. You can use um, suction cups, but guys, I don't really trust suction cups because they have fallen, they have fallen, they have come unstuck before. And once once that happened a few times, that's when I just got my rope and harness. So you can find all the information for the rope and harness down below. I also will link down below a video and the timestamp of where I go over work, like product for product on the rope and harness, what rope to get, what uh, harness to get. If you want that information, go in the link, the description down below, and I will have the timestamp of that video where I go over all that. Now, when it comes to the polishing, we're using the Flex 341 VRG with the Minzerna 400 compound with the Lake Country Orange Force pad. Okay, now this is a foam pad and the polisher. We're gonna do our side to side, up down, side to side pattern when we're doing all of the polishing from now on. As you can tell right here, I'm doing my side to side, up down, side to side. In the description down below, I will put another video that I made on how to use the Flex 3401 VRG. If you want more information on how to properly use this machine, you can check that video out as well. But we're doing all of the exterior of the superstructure with the polish, okay? One thing to note is always do the side to side, up down, side to side motion, and then wipe off your polish. Put four more dots on your pad, move down about two more feet, and then do side to side, up down, side to side motion. Wipe it off, move on two more feet. I've had a couple of guys ask me, hey, do you wipe off the polish every time? Because I don't always film me wiping the polish off. But yes, every single section I do, I polish it and then wipe it off. Polish it, wipe it off. Polish it, wipe it off. And we're gonna move all the way around the boat, okay? In this case, we did all of the exterior superstructure. We're doing the lower part by the windows. The only thing I did not polish is the front black mask, okay? The lower front portion of this boat is called the mask. And the, I did not do it only because I will come out in a few weeks and actually redo that. But you have to do that a little differently because it is paint. So if you're seeing this uh, later on, um, in this video, I should have another video up on how to properly detail a painted mask. Go ahead, check that video out. As of right now and today, it's not created yet. It will be created here in a few months. One reason why I love Minzerna 400 is because it is a diminishing abrasive compound. Now, what does that mean, okay? That means that this compound is super gritty, but when it heats up and it's under pressure of the polisher, it actually turns into a fine polish and then it finishes out really, really well. So I've had a lot of people ask me like, hey, this is a heavy cutting compound. Why are you using it as polish? Because this product is so good at breaking down into a fine polish that it finishes out perfectly on boats. Now, paint is a little different. Like if you use this product on cars, it's a little aggressive on cars and you have to come back and refinish it up. But when you're talking about gel coat or marine paint, Manzerna 400 and is an amazing product and I've yet to find a product to come close to it. 
um, I'm always testing products, guys. And when I do find one, hopefully in the future, you know, maybe we can find something better. But as of right now, Minzerna 400 has been great because it's good to cut out swirl marks, um, you know, light oxidation, and it finishes out super well to leave a perfect, perfect finish. So that's why, guys, I use Minzerna 400 a ton, pretty much in every single one of my videos. And it's gonna, like I said, it's gonna remove light oxidation, light water marks, and best of all, it's gonna remove your holograms and swirl marks that the rotary buffers leave behind. Now guys, what I did not film on this was me washing the boat again with Dawn dishwashing soap uh, between the Minzerna 400 and then the Jeskar step. I always do it. Uh, the only reason why I didn't film it was I actually left my camera at home, unfortunately. Um, my wife ended up bringing it to me about four hours later when I got there. So I basically did all the polishing on one day and then I came back the next day to wash it and then do the wax. So guys, I recommend either washing it down with Dawn dishwashing soap again, and this is gonna help get all the oils off from the compound. After we're done polishing and after you wash it with Dawn again to get all the oils off of the boat, then we're gonna go ahead and use our Jeskar Power Lock to seal up the gel coat. All right, this is a sealant, guys, and if you watch any of my other videos, you know all of this, but for the sake of guys that have just found this for the first time, this product is a sealant. You put a nice thin layer on, and the reason why I say thin, guys, is because if you put too much of a thick layer, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get off. Um, a lot of people have this, like, this, this thought of, you know, if I put more product on, that means it's gonna work better. No, not necessarily, because you're taking it all off when you wipe it off anyway. You just need a thin layer, just enough to cover the surface, and that's it, okay? Go ahead, do your front brow, do the exterior of the top side, and then we're gonna move all the way around the boat, and then we're gonna wait at least 30 minutes before we come and take off the Jeskar Power Lock. That is the, that is the, the biggest thing with Jeskar Power Lock, is you wanna apply it, and then you want to let it sit for at least 30 minutes before you come and take it off. So what I usually do is I do the entire top side and then I come back and take it all off. Jeskar is a great product because it's going to help with UV protection, which is going to stop the boat from oxidizing. And it's really good at water sheeting. Okay, now I've had people complain like, hey, Jeskar Power Lock doesn't really bead all that great. And I get it. It's not the best beading um, sealant out there, but it's really, really good at water sheeting. Now, what do I mean by that? Okay. Water beads are great. They're cool. They're sexy. Everyone loves nice water beads. All right. I get it. But when a water beads up and it dries on the surface, that's actually what creates watermarks. That's what creates water spots. And when you see little spots that are dried on there and that's watermarks. Now, the reason why that happens is because there's minerals in the water. Like I said earlier, that if they dry on the surface, you can see their minerals basically bake into the gel coat. Now, when a product like Jeskar Power Lock is a water sheeting product, that means the water hits it and then it literally sheets off, like it rolls off or it just comes right off. It doesn't just bead and stick on there, okay? So if you if you uh, detailed your boat and then a week or two later or a month later, you don't really see the water beading up super crazy, that does not necessarily mean the, the Jeskar Power Lock is not working. It actually means it is working. It's doing what it's designed to do and it's water sheeting. It's taking the water and taking it off of your boat versus just beating up and sitting on the surface.
All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and just finish up the cockpit, get everything cleaned up, and then we're gonna go ahead and wipe all of our Jeskar power lock off. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the final kind of detailing aspects before we uh, say the boat is done and we give it to the customer. So first we're gonna do the metal. We're gonna go over all of our metal with Woody Wax. Woody Wax is a great metal wax for all your stainless steel, aluminum, um, or any any chrome, any metal, any bright work you have, okay? This is a good product for cleaning it and protecting it. This is a wax. It's going to protect it against corrosion, oxidation, stains, rust, that kind of thing, and it's also gonna clean it. If there's light water marks, it'll take them off. If it needs light polishing, this product will do it. I love Woody Wax. I've used it for years and years and years. The owner's a great guy. Woody is awesome. Um, so guys, go ahead, do yourself a favor, pick up Woody Wax and use it on all of your metal. You can also use colonite. I'm not a huge fan of colonite. Most sport fishing, uh, you know, most sport fishing owners either want Woody Wax or colonite. They're kind of arch enemies. I prefer Woody Wax over colonite. Now we're gonna go ahead and protect our seats and our captain's seats. Uh, there wasn't a ton of seat cushions on this boat, so we're doing the captain's seats right here, the captain's chair. Uh, all, all this is is 303. It's gonna protect the vinyl seats. It's gonna make them uh, more resistant to the weather, more resistant to UV, and it's also gonna kind of clean them up a little bit. So these seats were not in terrible shape. I normally would clean them with some degreaser and stuff, but these seats were literally perfect. They stay covered up. So all we needed in this case was 303 just to protect them. I went ahead and wiped down the varnishing wood as well, just to give the varnish and the seats a little extra protection. All right, so now we're gonna hop to our Isinglass. In this case, the Isinglass was literally perfect. So all I had was one wet rag and one dry rag, and I went ahead and wiped down the Isinglass. Uh, the Isinglass was already beating up real nice, so it didn't need a ton of extra protection. Just use one wet rag, one dry rag to clean up the Isinglass. There are plenty of Isinglass protectants out there. Um, IGL makes a few. I will link one down below that I like for the Isinglass as well that you can find if you want a little bit of Isinglass protection. But in this case, one wet rag and one dry rag did the trick. Last but not least is the non-skid sealer. This is Nautical One non-skid sealer and protector. All you do is you spray it directly onto the surface and then you wipe it in and then that's it. You are done. The floors were already clean because I took my time and you know just made sure the floors weren't dirty from when I did it the first time. So in this case, guys, we did all the non-skid and this is just gonna protect the non-skid. It's gonna help from UV oxidation and stop fish blood, guts, and that kind of thing from sticking to it. I did the entire boat and once you're done this step, you are done. Guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it was long. I know you learned a lot. I know I said a lot, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, however, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell notification so every time I make a video, it will pop up, and I will see you guys on my next video. Let's go.